Everybody, my name is Tim. Welcome back to the channel. And uh, this video is probably going to be outdated like a couple of months because of how fast this whole AI stuff is is, is moving. Uh, but we're doing one anyway because uh, I think this is sort of can be applicable to like anybody of you right now. We're not going to do uh, generating concept art type stuff like, like literally everybody is doing here with Stable Diffusion, which is, which is cool. Uh, it's pretty impressive, but we're going to use this to sort of create variations on textures that you can actually use in your work, so dialable textures, um, which I think is pretty cool uh, and is something is just useful to use right now if you need cool textures and you cannot find the actual texture right now. So we're going to create like, like just true PBR materials uh, you can just slap on your models and start rendering and it's really fast to do and it's really fun um they're going there's going to be a cat in the background yay so it's my cat nila um she likes to to sit here when i <laughs> yeah when i when i work and um i didn't want to put her away so there's just going to be a cat here uh, and i don't think anybody will probably mind so if you have some meowing in the background this is because the cat is there so thumbs up if you like the cat uh, anyway, without further ado, let's actually just sort of first install. Oh no, now she's walking away. Goodbye, kitten. Um, but let's just first install Stable Diffusion with a gra uh, graphics user interface to run. Like, there's multiple ways to do this. It's an open source thing. There's dozens of sort of guides on how to make it work. This one just has a nice uh, graphics user, user interface to work. Um, so yeah, let's just start installing it. But this will run locally as well, so there's no need to like get a paid subscription for something. It just, this runs locally. It, of course, the f speed depends on how fast your hardware is. Uh, but this is guide here, which I'll put in the description, uh, but we'll also go through it in case this guide ever gets removed or something. Um, so you just go through this guide. There's a couple of things you need to do. You, they mention install Git to download the repo. You don't need to install Git. You can install Git and clone the repo if you want, but you can also just go to the GitHub repository like this. And then just go to the code and download the zip file. And then when you have the zip file, you want to uh, put it somewhere. You want to, so I've just put it in on my C drive here, stable diffusion. And then I just extract it here. So essentially this is just what you get from the zip, just this, this folder. So you just put it there, that's step one, easy. All right, um, right. you need to download the checkpoints. I guess that's, that's the training data because this is quite a large, large file. You can get it over here. Uh, you need to make an account here. It's a free account, so you just register and you can download it. So just download this model. Then when you download this model, you put it in this folder and you rename it to model. And uh, you just put it, I think, let's see where, where was it putting it? All right, there we go. Model.ckpt, just rename it. And I guess when they later release another model, you can swap it out um, pretty easy in the same folder. Um, other thing that you need to do is you need to go to uh, uh, GFP gun checkpoints. Um, there's multiple sort of models that you can use. I downloaded them both. Um, experiment with it. I'm, I, 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 I've recently started experimenting with all of this, so uh, uh, I don't know enough to really give you an in-depth in -depth explanation of what the difference would be for texture generation. Uh, 1.4 produces slightly more details and better identity than 1.5. I guess that for textures, that could be useful. Uh, 1.3, more natural uh, restoration results uh, on very low quality, high quality inputs. So um, I guess they both have their pros and cons. So you just put that one in the folder as well. So chief mm -hmm. you can see I have them there. Um, then there's uh a bunch of r checkpoints you can use so if you go in here you can download any of these so these are sort of the extra stuff you for like for example if you want to upscale your textures which is of course something pretty pretty important to uh to do uh so you can just read sort of the the purpose of how uh how it works so maybe download the for for uh, uh 4x ultra sharp because it's going to be great for sort of upscaling uh images but like you can you can try uh, you can try multiple ones. Maybe you want to clean up your textures first and like you want to maybe use another model. Um, just put those in the uh, in the folder as well, uh, in the ESRGAN folders. It's going to be over here. And just put a couple of, you can just put the models there. 
that's essentially everything you need for the installation. Um, then what you do is you just go in there, stable diffusion, and you just open and you put a uh, double click on webgui.bat. And oh, wait, one more thing that you need to do. Let me close this. You need to install Python. Sorry. Uh, kind of assumed, I guess, everybody had Python installed. You can, if you go to the Windows Store, you can just install, you, you can go to python.org, uh, download it here. Or if you're just on Windows, you can go to just store and then just download it from here. And it's just going to be a one click thing if it actually wants to load. So you just search for Python and then just go to Python 3.10 and install this. And then it'll, it'll work. Um, so do, do, do whatever you want, do one of the two. All right. Anyway, now let's actually open the web UI to bat because if you didn't have Python installed, it's not going to work. So, uh, do you need to do this every time you're going to sort of start, uh, using this? So there's not a one time thing. you just do this every time when you want to use launch stable diffusion. Let's just, um, all right. Took a little bit, but, uh, here we go. Um, so model loader, you need to do this every time, by the way, when you start doing this, uh, and then once it's finished, you can go to 127.0.0.1786 uh, and then you can see we're here inside of stable diffusion. Um, from here you can do anything that stable diffusion can do. So you can also just use it to generate regular images like, uh, extremely fluffy kittens eating cheese. Uh, something like that. I don't know. Let's do a little bit higher resolution. All right. Let's just press generate. That's going to generate some extremely fluffy kittens eating cheese, hopefully. It's not necessarily the best thing I've ever seen, but it's a, it's generally de definitely a, a fluffy kitten. Um, let's do not, I mean, you can do a batch count. You can do a couple. And, uh, and when you're doing this, it's going to essentially, you're going to have an output folder here and it's going to output your images here. See, it's uh, starting to make some, uh, some fluffy kittens there. Uh, let me, fuck, uh, windows. Why didn't you? All right. Yeah. So you're going to make, oh my God, these are, all right. These are, these are quite, quite fluffy. Oh. Such fluffy kittens. Oh my God, look at them. Beautiful. All right. Anyway, that's how you use it. Sort of, uh, you can just do your heart's content, use it to generate cool looking art here. Um, but that's not what this video is about. We're going to do textures. So essentially for textures, you kind of want a nice sort of input image and then we're going to go to text, uh, text to image. Uh, we're, let's just use mega scans for now. Cause this is a big library of sort of stuff that we, uh, that we could put in there. So let's open it up. All right, and let's just let's just find something. I'm gonna find if it wants to maybe something like jagged rocks, and let's just put it to surfaces because we want surfaces input, of course. And let's just I guess go through here and get some some nice looking jagged rocks. I guess this one looks cool. Um, all right. For some reason it signed out. So let's sign in again. And pretty sure, or all right. Yeah. This one I already got downloaded. Um, <clears throat> so I've kind of just want to find this one in my repository. You can also export it, but I kind of just want the preview image for this. Uh, this is essentially just all we need. So let's go to the to the repository, surfaces, and this is called, um, probably be on the rock and then which one would it be? Not this one. We can also just use another one, but I thought, all right, I think, is that the one? Yeah, that's the one. So I guess we got a, we got a preview image here. You can also put in the, uh, put in the albedo, but this, this has like some shadow information, which I think might help with the, um, uh, which is doing the whole stable diffusion thing. Um, right. Uh, where do we No, It's not that one. Yeah. Here I sort of exported it previously. Let's get rid of that one. All right. Um, so you can just grab the image and just drag it in there <coughs> and actually drag it in there. 
All right, there we go. Drag it in there. Uh, you can set your resolution. Let's, let's work on 1024 by 1024 for now. The bigger it is, the longer it's going to take. 512 by 512 is just going to be slow. Uh, it's going to be fast, but it's going to not have a lot of detail. And since we're going to be using this sort of to generate textures, we do want sort of nice detail. So 1024, what the 1024, we can get that upscaled later when we find a nice result to 4K one. It's going to be pretty crisp. Uh, so it's going to be sort of a good hybrid. Uh, or we can generate our variations as well once we have something that we like to, um, yeah, to actually uh, keep working on it. A uh, bunch of different sampling methods, but let's just first give it a prompt because we do need to give it a prompt. Um, jagged Icelandic rocks, uh, mega scans, photogram. So this is um, grammar. I'm not sure. Did I type it correctly? I don't think so. Um, just give it some prompts. It's gonna sort of take the input image and sort of apply the prompts to it to generate like, like variations and stuff. So photogram, you can also sort of, what you can do is also interrogate your image, um, which you can maybe try. Interrogate is so essentially gonna look at the image and sort of generate a um, generate a prompt from it, uh, but sometimes it's a little bit random. Like I try with another picture, uh, like another sort of texture and it, when I generated that as an image, it so it, it gave me birds instead of, Rocks that it was. All right, I guess pile of rocks with a black background, white background. But all right, that's just very random. You can see maybe um, um, a picture of jagged Icelandic rocks, mega scans, photogrammetry. Let's put 4K. Let's do texture. And then one important thing here is we want it to be tileable because, of course, this is just now just a preview. Period. We want it to generate a tiling image. Um, because we're gonna make it into a texture that needs to be tileable, of course. Let's just let's just try this. Uh, let's do a batch count. Uh, so batch count is gonna sort of generate like we did before to get and just gen generate a grid of images. Uh, let's wait for this to, uh, to compete. It's it's quite fast. Depends on your hardware, of course. Like I have 3090, so this is gonna be maybe faster than if you have a slower end GPU. But in general, stable diffusion is is pretty fast on like the lower resolutions. You can also just experiment with this on a on a lower resolution here maybe 512 by 512 but like i mentioned for textures you probably want to go a little bit higher and just wait for this to um all right so we're getting some stuff here you can see here you can look at the sort of grid of all of the things we can go through this uh this one is decent but i'm not i'm not liking it that much um let's add some extra stuff um um sharp uh what else do we want to be detailed um let's just add 4k again um all right let's and we can try different algorithms so there's a different sampling methods here i found that D dpm is gonna give me like with like i tried it with this texture before they gave me a better result let's just first see what sort of it will give with uh, Euler A, and then I'm gonna switch it to DPM and we're gonna see sort of the difference that th this thing is gonna make. All right, so this did not make it better. Um, let's, re let's just remove some, so let's remove maybe these two, let's remove. All right, so this is already giving me some more stuff to work with. Um, I don't necessarily like all of them, but this one is pretty cool. It's a little different, but I I kind of like it. Um, what we can do, like if we decide that we like something like this, what you can actually do is you can sort of grab the seed here and you can just put it in here. So if you're gonna put the seed in there, it's essentially just gonna um, use uh, sort of this as a sort of a base and you can iterate from there. So then it's not gonna give you completely different results every time. It's just gonna be roughly in this neighborhood. Let's just try it again. And we might, so this is already being saved. So if we get really different results, we might actually start using this as an input image instead. Uh, but let's just first see what this will give us with these, with the seed. And else I'm gonna switch out this input image for this one. Uh, but let's, let's, let's see what we're gonna get. Cause I, I, I kind of like what this is doing here. Get on one's attention. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I mean. Like if I, if I don't let her in here, she's, she's like, a, she's gonna meow all the time. Or I need to like put her in a living room, but that's gonna be sad because Kitten doesn't wanna be sad, so yeah. All right, so not necessarily much of a difference. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send this one to image to image. 
So it's going to grab this as my input image. I'm going to just put the seed back to minus one. So minus one will just generate a different result every time. Uh, and now I'm going to let's generate again. Let's just see what we're going to get now. All right, there we go. So we're starting to get some, some cool stuff. Um, kind of like this one looks pretty cool, actually. Or maybe, or maybe this one. This is more defined shapes. I want to maybe see some more variations. So this is where you would, could like put your seed in here. And you could just try with sort of uh, different things like this will sort of the, this will sort of give how much guidance the uh, uh, the prompt should have. So you could maybe reduce that a little bit and then press generate. <laughs> you can really hear the cat in the background. Yeah, come over here. <laughs> come over here, Nila. Yeah. All right, so we're getting some variations here. Uh, This one's quite cool. I don't know. I still, I think I still like this one the best. Um, maybe I, I can see if I can come up with a prompt that's sort of gonna, um, cause there's some, it's like something that looks like sort of gold flakes or something sharp detailed. Maybe let's try gold flakes. Uh, um the mountain see if i can get something really different try with the different angle let's see i kind of i this one is also kind of cool maybe we will continue with this one later but let's just let's try let's try this first oh probably should have probably should have done a random seed All right i can interrupt this Right, minus one again, and then let's do generate. And if you open up the, you can see in the um, command line here, you can see sort of the, the stuff generating. And if you go to your to your outputs, um, it's gonna be this one. So even when you generate a grid, it's just gonna output in the uh, in the images here. Oh wait, in the text image grids. There we go. So you can see, you can see all your sort of generated images here. All right, I think, all right, we're all, we can already start seeing some, all right, this is starting to look cool, actually. Let's just wait for this to um to finish. We have the actual grid, but it's kind of, I kind of, I'm digging sort of the sort of the gold flaky type of stuff that was being added, which I, I kind of liked here. So, all right, so it's done. Let's have a look. So this one is dope. All right, it's added like a literal gold thing. Oh, this is very different. It's like literally sort of gold ores or something. That's maybe getting away too much from what we want. Um, like this one is, is quite nice. All right, maybe let's, uh, Let's just try this one. So, right, so with this one, uh, or let's maybe let's maybe grab the seed and try different algorithms. Uh, so maybe try with Euler. We're 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 getting we're getting somewhere. Right. I don't think this is getting any better, to be honest. Um, let's try with just like like I made like like these ones give me sort of more realistic results. Uh, generally. Let's just, you know what? We can also maybe try grabbing the one that we did like. And just putting that as an imp as an image. And then I think we're, right, so I'm gonna grab that one as an input image. Generate some more stuff. And then I think we're gonna go to the next step and just create a PBR material from this because elves are gonna be here uh, all day essentially. Cause you can just keep going with this like, until you get something that you like, you can create variations of it, and et cetera, et cetera. All right, I don't like what the gold flake prompt now is doing. Uh, I'm gonna remove gold flakes and generate something else. And then uh, I think, as I, like I do like this, I just don't like what it's doing here. So I just remove the gold flake stuff and then hopefully it'll keep sort of the input of the, um, of the more gold flake-like stuff without it actually having real gold flakes in between there.
or maybe maybe it will and it'll look cool because i like i do like this one to be honest but uh right that seems to get rid of most of the gold flags entirely uh, so maybe oh okay i think i like this one uh so it doesn't have the gold flags like real gold flags but it does sort of have these sort of patches which i kind of like Right, um, so let's say that we like this one. And by the way, you can also go to InPaint, for example, and just actually paint stuff in here to generate more stuff in there. Really, like, you can you can do a lot that you want. But let's just first, let's start upscaling this, because right now it's 1024 by 1024, which is quite a low res texture. We probably want like a 4K texture. Let's put it to send to extras. And this is where the extra models sort of come in that we had uh, over here. Um, so there's, you can do multiple sort of... Um, upscale algorithms uh, as you could let's just try the two different ones so let's just leave it as default let's do like i i let's let's just try something let's just gen press generate let's see see what's going to do for something you can you should, you should probably see it work here but with the upscale you don't always see it in the command line let's see if it uh, will actually uh, do some all right there we go so uh, upscale texture, let's see in our folder. So this will output in a different folder. It will be in the extra images. I don't know, it always generates two for some reason. Not sure why. Uh, but you can see we get a, we get like a pretty crisp sort of nice looking thing. Um, it is of course more of a sort of a, like, like a photo because it has like the shadows, but it, that's pretty good because we're going to use another AI thing to generate a PBR material from this. In this case, where Substance Sampler comes in um so let's jump into substance sampler so let's do substance sampler a substance sampler has its own sort of uh ai image to material thing you probably like, if you've used substance before you probably know what i'm talking about essentially what you can do here is you can just grab for example one of these images just drag it in here and you can see there's multiple ways to do it so you say image to material ai powered and um you just press thing is gonna do it's gonna do its thing right all right there we go uh we probably want to set something for the base material so there's a couple of presets we might maybe use the brick preset here um let's try something more gray for the uh for the base color um it's already it's already looking pretty good to be honest you can you can change like stuff like roughness here um specular level etc etc uh you can go in your shader settings here to change the displacement quality for your electric pre preview and probably want to do like a nice hri maybe not sure which one we have right now so you can see you can preview your hri and then with shift and right click you can see you can sort of rotate your light to see how sort of how this behaves probably a little bit less specular this already in itself looks pretty good um the thing I noticed that essentially if you make it tileable here, it will be tileable. Once you upscale it, it might have slight tiling issues. So what I like to do is um, just go in here and just say make it tile. And it's essentially just cleaning that last part up. Um, as you can see here, there's like there's some slight tiling issues here. It's essentially happening with the upscaler. But you can see if we just put that thing, that will essentially just clean it up. And then we sort of have a nice tileable PBR material. Um, you can you can play around with this, like do other things, but um, let's just leave this as this is right now, and let's let's just export this. So let me go to the folder here for my tutorial. Already have a texture folder there. Um, maybe want to preview this in a high quality even. Right, go to share. I still don't understand why they call this share. This sounds like a sort of a social media app, but let's just export. Uh, set it up however you want. Like I'm going to do this with Redshift. I'm going to do a um, 4K texture and call this uh, Jagged this uh, Jagged Rocks Discolored or something like that. Um, and let's just export. Essentially, now we have a PBR material, but it is for the sake of it, just put it in, in Redshift and see uh, see what it's going to do, right? Uh, let's open up Houdini. All right, so we're here inside of Houdini. Let me just save this out to the sort of the hip folder here. Just call it... Uh, 
Yeah. Stable diffusion tutorial. All right, there we go. All right, let's just try this out. Let's make a grid. Let's use UV project on it. Pretty simple. All right, there we go. Let's just build a little material. Let me just change my user interface. So we have uh, my regular sort of interface I'm used to. Let's make a material. Just material builder. And that's just, so we have the new standard material there. Let's just uh, put some stuff in here. Shift texture. Let's go to, um, let's see where did it, did it already put the textures? Uh, did I output them as a in a different folder? Stable diffusion. Oh wait, this is a different project. This was a demo project that I had before. Let's just okay. I'm gonna put them in here in the show correct folder. Text right. Uh, export. All right. Um. All right, we're gonna have texture folder here. Oh, oh, the, the cat wants attention again. Yeah, kitty. Yeah, I know you want petting. All right, uh, we can put diffuse in here. Let's call it diffuse. Put it in the base color. And then just do, uh, we don't need emission because there's no emission. We need metalness to go into metalness even. Like, it's probably, Gonna be black because there's not really any metal here. Although it might, because we used sort of gold flake-ish materials, or maybe I don't know what substance they did. Um, let's look at the other stuff. Uh, reflection roughness. Let's do roughness. Let's put that into reflection roughness. There we go. Let's grab. I think the last one we need here probably is going to be displacement because we don't have any opacity. So let's go displacement. And let's just do a displacement texture. Let's put it in there. Displacement, right? Oh. Let's make a scale a little bit smaller. Let's do a rich of light dome. Let's maybe grab a nice HDRI from Polyhaven. Always nice HDRIs here. This is look something that might might be good for our for our thing. Let's search for something like rocks. All right, this looks pretty cool. Download it. Go to our file, let's make a Easter eye folder. There we go. Dollar hip, there we go, it's right, lost city. Do camera. All right, there we go. Uh, all right, let's open up the Redshift render view. Let's press render. Uh, oh wait, we didn't apply anything yet. Oh, probably for the diffuse, we want to put this to, maybe just put it to auto. We'll probably figure out what to do with that. Um, there we go. All right, and we need to, of course, enable distillation and enable displacement, else it's just gonna look weird. Maybe we wanna, all right, let's increase the displacement over here. Oh, did we, did we have a bump map as well? Or did we, oh yeah, we have a normal map. Let's just call, grab the normal map as well. Normal map, all oh, right, yeah, I guess we just need to, just do that one in here. There we go. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, there we go, I guess. I think we've uh, maybe reduced the displacement a little bit over here. 
Let me close this one down. It's just going to eat up VRAM. Yeah, uh, like we've created quite of a nice sort of PBR material here, as you can see. And this will this will tile, so I can I can try it out if I want. I can uh, let's just hook up all of this stuff. And let's just put it to two by two. And yeah, let's press render. Right, uh, you can see perfectly tiles, looks good. Um, yeah, uh, that's it. That's how you put uh, material altering people out of a job, <laughs> I guess. Now I'm just kidding, but like you can, you can, you can see how this can be pretty great to sort of make cool materials yourself, sort of variations based on other inputs. Um, and because essentially we just gave this an input image of sort of a texture, or rough, rough estimation of the texture that we were after to get something that's quite different, but still in the same ballpark. So you can see how you can sort of maybe make this, uh, use this to sort of, if you have sort of an environment and you have live mega scans textures, but you want some more variations, like based on sort of a similar input, this can be sort of a pretty great tool already today um, to just make cool looking stuff. Um, so yeah, hopefully this was enjoyable and a sort of a different take on using sort of AI to, to help you in your work today, instead of just making well, I guess it could already help you with concept and work, but now it can also help you with uh, 3D work before we're also being put out of a job when AI can generate models, which it already can. And I saw a bunch of things which I'm happy with because I hate modeling. Um, I'm going to be out of a job when it can generate cool effects, uh, but I already, I'm already starting to make games. So I guess, I guess I'll make myself less obsolete when I can do their game programming stuff. Uh, about that, uh, my game dev devlog thing, Coming along pretty good. I have like a couple of hours of stuff. I just need to finish editing it at some point. Um, so it'll all come soon. Um, but hope you liked this video. Leave this a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe if you want to see more stuff. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Get on. Yay. Say goodbye. Eli. Yay. All right. I'll let you sleep.